I'm very happy to be here. I hope you can see my slides and hear me well. You know, I see a lot of uh, friendly faces and so very happy to present today. So we have a short presentation. So what I'll be going over is introducing ETHOS uh, as, a, as a platform to do adaptive radiotherapy. Um, since we don't have that much time, there's an actual clinical need for adaptive radiotherapy. And there are a number of publications. I'm just showing a couple here. But um, at the end of the day, uh, we know that things change during the course of treatment, but we have never ex uh, explored adaptive radiotherapy in the past because we did not have practical tools to do this in the clinic. And ETHOS, uh, as, a, as a platform to do online adaptive radiotherapy, is, is, is facilitating that, and, and hopefully we can gather enough evidence soon to, to show the, the power of online adaptive radiotherapy. So you, you must know that there we have a, a platform called Halcyon. Ethos is essentially the same platform, but with a significant addition of software tools that enables uh, online adapter radiation therapy. And I'll go over the steps to do that. Um, and all of the Halcyon platforms that we have are upgradable to the Ethos uh, uh, platform. Uh, essentially, the hardware is very similar uh, to, to Halcyon. All of this adaptive process is, is based on the imaging that is associated with this unit, which is a KV cone beam uh, images, but it, 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 is, it is high quality, and you do need high quality images to be able to do adaptive radiotherapy. And here I'm showing some examples. The top row is in the pelvis, obviously, in a prostate case with a helical planning CT. So this is the highest quality CT you can get. The bottom one is an image acquired on a Halcyon uh, unit, similar to ETHOS. And you can see that it's, it's practically the same. I mean, there are some minor differences you can tell. But if you look at, for example, at the right lower side, you can see the, uh, the, the details around the bladder. So the quality of the imaging is critical. And this is an anatomy does not move. These cone beams are acquired at 15 seconds today. So you can have someone, a patient hold their breath. And in the future, we expect this to go even faster than the 15 seconds. And you can see same setup at the top is a simulation CT, helical CT with breath hold with contrast in the bowel. And, and the bottom one is the is a KV cone beam acquired with breath hold in 15 seconds. And now you can see, unlike a lot of the cone beams that we get today on our more traditional machines, you can see uh, the outlines of the liver, the pancreas, the, the small bowel, et cetera, et cetera, the duodenum even. You can see still some motion artifact within the 15 seconds, but the quality of the images now enables adaptive radiotherapy. So what's, what's ETHOS? Essentially, first of all, the most important part of this is that it is assisted with artificial intelligence. And by design, we wanted to make adaptive happen in a 15 minute treatment slot, just to make it feasible for many clinics to actually implement this. Um, and it's very much centered around the patient himself. So what I'm showing here is the process in initial planning during um, the time the patient's on the couch and in between fractions, which here means treatment monitoring, all the steps that are described here in blue are new that are added to the ETHOS machine versus the black, which is the setup and cone beam CT treatment delivery is what we do today. Everything in blue is added as, as functionality on the ETHOS machine. And at the bottom, I'll go over some of those steps, but at the bottom it says automated multimodality image fusion. The platform also allows at any point in time to bring in any kind of imaging that you have on the patient, even new imaging, and then fuse it with the cone beam of the day and act on it. And all of this workflow is assi assisted by artificial intelligence. So let me point out a few things. During the initial planning, the process is different in the sense that you have a new way of do dropping the prescription. It's they're driven by templates. The segmentation is, uh, is assisted and then you generate multiple plans and we pick from the multiple plans automatically. This is not your traditional Eclipse environment, it's a new environment. Very much, you know, interactive. So you get a, a, a number of plans, you pick from the plan, the, a plan that, uh, that is uh, 
that is adequate. But more importantly, during the time the patient is on the table, so the on-couch adaptation, the system would do automatic segmentation of all organs at risk. So you, you only have to check their correct. They're very easy tools to to uh, to correct the anatomy. And you can you can see here, uh, it's pointing out the bladder that's now sitting in a different position. It's higher, and then the system would automatically generate uh, a plan. That's the adapted plan versus the scheduled plan. And you pick the one that you want. You say, okay, not much just change. I keep the scheduled plan. Things have changed. I take the adapted plan. The QA is done by an independent software check, and then uh, the, the treatment is delivered. So that's during uh, 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 the time the patient is on the couch. And in between fractions, the system will do three dose accumulation. Um, and then you can see trends. If you're adapting or not adapting, you can see trends either in organs at risk or targets if things are getting hot and cold. And you can do an offline adaptation if needed also um, uh, the same way you would do it for online adaptation. So it's a very user-friendly way of an efficient way of doing adaptation. So what's the uh, status of ETHOS today? Um, there are a number of installations and, and a number of adaptive sessions that have been done, and I'm, I'm going to go over that. But we see that um, in these over 7,000 adaptive sessions that have been already done, that we can monitor, you know, 83% of the time users have selected the adaptive plan and not one the scheduled plan, i.e. there was enough of a difference, but clinically users have said, okay, I'm gonna go with the new plan, the optimized plan, re-optimized plan, not the scheduled plan, um, indicating that it, the process is actually helping the users to, 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 to do this efficiently. And on the right side, you can see a number of anatomic sites, disease sites where adaptive has been utilized. This is not quantitative, but you can have a feel for where it's going. But currently, a lot of the use is in the pelvis. I think David, uh, after my talk, will go over some applications in the, uh, in the pelvis. This chart shows you the breakdown of the different steps during the adaptive process. Uh, on the uh, x-axis is the different steps, on the y-axis is the time uh, it takes. So you can see first in the blue is where it says influencer review. This is the time that users have taken to review organs at risk, which is somewhere around five to six minutes. You can see reviewing the target is about two minutes. Overall plan review is about five minutes. And in purple here, it's showing the overall total time that it's taking to do the adaptive session. And it's a little bit short of 14 minutes or so. So we're still within the, in general, the 15 minutes that we wanted to do this. Obviously it varies a little bit more with more complex cases or simple cases, but overall, this is actually very efficient. Now, what's the potential benefit, you know, once we have this tool, we can proceed with those escalation. We can reduce margins. We're guaranteeing PTV coverage if there's anatomy that changes a lot. So we should be able to see decrease, decrease toxicity and, you know, and, uh, and um, enable shorter treatment courses. So going towards hypofractionation, SBRT type approaches should be associated with the adaptive process. That, that should be an advantage. There's a consortium of a number of sites and, you know, here, you know, I'm showing a, it's about now 30 plus sites across the world that have access to the technology that we work together to uh, provide, um, to share information about how to do adaptive and also start working on clinical outcomes. And um, just really quickly, just, uh, I don't have a slide on that, but Varian will have about six Varian clinical trials, like pharmaceutical companies have uh, trials, testing adaptive in a number of diseases, lung, prostate, bladder, cervix, uh, pancreas, um, and, uh, uh, and, and a number of investigator-initiated clinical trials have already started um, in, in this space. And a last uh, uh, mention of motion management. Today, it's, not, um, it's, it's mostly in static anatomy that we do this a lot, but motion management would, will mean uh, using um, 
a surface guided um, um, breadth hole type of approach. We have to remember that the cone beam acquisition is very quick. The, the, it's a four RPM gantry rotation during imaging. So a lot of what we do in traditional um, uh, radiotherapy doesn't apply here. But this is the system. It's she's here. It shows on a true beam, but it's the same system that would go on a on a uh, on a halcyon, and it's very well built for doing breadth hold. So instead of gating or tracking, breadth hold is a very very efficient solution on this platform. So in conclusion, Ethos is an artificial intelligence assisted radiation therapy system delivering uh, enabling online adaptation. Artificial intelligence today is mostly assisting auto segmentation of ARs, some planning, um, and then the imaging is quite fast and it will only go faster. Um, I didn't mention this before, but um, if you're not doing adaptive, the, the unit will function as almost like a halcyon. It will be a very efficient IGRT, IMRT machine. Not doing adaptive, it will not sit idle. And in currently deploy unit, the process is actually taking in in the field with real users about 15 minutes, and we're waiting uh, to uh, to get the results from the clinical trials. And I will thank you and pass it to David for his for his part. Thank you very much.